Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Kyle. Kyle is a golden pig tier patron that has been supporting this channel for over a year now. I truly couldn't do this without amazing patrons like Kyle. And for the personalized deck tech, Kyle chose Sidisi Brew Tyrant with a focus on self-mill. Sidisi is a 3-3 Naga Shaman that costs 1 black, green, blue. She has whenever Sidisi enters the battlefield or attacks with the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard. And then whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. So self-mill is definitely a great direction to take this deck. The more times that you mill a creature into your graveyard, the more 2-2 zombies that you get. So Sidisi can actually mill when she comes into play or attacks, but we're going to have plenty of other ways to mill ourselves as well. Keep in mind that milling a ton of cards with one effect might not be that effective since it says one or more creature cards. So if we have an effect that mills us for, say, 10 cards and we hit 5 creatures out of that, we still only get one zombie. So again, the more separate small mill effects that we have, the more effective this can be. So our strategy in this deck is pretty straightforward. We're going to get Sidisi out and start milling to make a ton of zombies. Again, the more creatures that we run in this deck and the more mill effects that we have, the higher percentage chance that we have to make a ton of zombies. And then how do we win with this deck? We're going to overwhelm our opponents with our zombie horde and their friends. Outside of zombies, we've got some other tokens that we can make with this deck that benefit from milling. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start things off with tactic number one, Ramp Away. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bauble, which we can pay 2 and tap and sacrifice to get a base land into play tapped. Next up, we're running 2 mana dorks that can ramp and mill us with Milliken and Deranged Assistant. Each have tap, put the top card of your library into your graveyard, add colorless. And next up, we've got some turn 2 land ramp with Farseek, Rampant Growth, and Sakura Tribe Elder. Farseek is going to get us an island or a swamp into play tapped. And then both Rampant Growth and Sakura Tribe Elder can get us any basic land into play tapped. Next up, we've got some more creatures that can help ramp us with Dilgen Farmhand, Dawn Trader Oak, and Fertilid. We can pay to sacrifice both Dilgen Farmhand and Dawn Trader Oak to get a basic land into play. And then Fertilid comes into play with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and by paying 1 in the green, we can remove one of those counters from it to search our library for a basic land and put in play tapped. And then there's Springbloom Druid, which when it comes into play, we sacrifice land and get 2 basics into play tapped. Finally, there's Cultivate, which gets us 1 basic into play tapped and 1 into our hand. So after we've ramped, fixed our mana, and gotten our commander out, what's next? Let's find out in tactic number 2, we're the Millers. First up, we've got Seder Wayfinder, which when it comes into play, we reveal the top four cards of our library, we can get a land card from among them into our hand, and the rest go into our graveyard. And then when Glowspore Shaman comes into play, we mill ourselves for three, and if we want to, we can put a land card from our graveyard on top of our library. Next up, we've got some creatures with some repeatable mill effects with Night Veil Sprite, Wood Sage, and Undercity Informer. When Night Veil Sprite attacks, we surveil one, so we look at the top card of our library, and we can choose to put that card in our graveyard. And then Wood Sage has tap, choose a creature card name, reveal the top four cards of your library, and put all of them with that name into your hand for the rest in your graveyard. And then Undercity Informer has pay one, Sacrifice a creature, target player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card, then puts those cards into their graveyard. So if we've got a disposable creature or one that's going to die, we can just sacrifice it instead so we can mill ourselves and hopefully make a zombie. Next up, we've got some creatures with some fantastic and free mill effects with Nyx Weaver, Splinter Fright, and Dreamborn Muse. Nyx Weaver says at the beginning of your upkeep, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and by paying one black green and exiling it, we can return target card from our graveyard to our hand. Not only does Splinter Fright also mills for two during our upkeep, but it can also be a huge threat in itself. It has Strample, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard. And then there's Dreamboard Muse, which can mill everyone for a ton. It says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard where X is the number of cards in their hand. Up next, we've got two creatures with Dredge 3 with Shambling Shell and Greater Moss Dog. Dredge 3 means that if we would draw a card, instead we can put exactly three cards from the top of our library into our graveyard, and if we do, we turn this card from our graveyard to our hand, otherwise we draw a card. So basically, instead of drawing a card, we can put this card back into our hand and mill ourselves for three. We've also got some bigger dredge effects with Golgari Thug, Stinkweed Dip, and Golgari Grave Troll. 
Golgari Thug has Dredge 4, Stinkweed Imp has Dredge 5, and Golgari Grave Troll has Dredge 6. Finally, we've got two creatures that can really help us with card selection and getting creatures into our graveyard with Tigum, Sidisi's Hand, and Underrealm Lynch. Tigum, Sidisi's Hand says, Skip your draw step at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. And by paying a black and tapping it, we exile X cards from our graveyard, and target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. Now this is a fantastic card for this deck, but Underrealm Lich is probably even more effective. It says if you would draw a card and said look at the top three cards of your library, then put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. And by paying four life, Underrealm Lich gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. So essentially this is a creature that can protect itself for free, and it also turns all of our draws into ways to get creatures into our graveyard. But outside of creatures, we've got some other ways to get cards into our graveyard as well. So now let's move on to tactic number three, the local mill. First up, there's Perpetual Timepiece, which we can tap with the top two cards of our library into our graveyard, and by paying two and exiling it, we can shuffle any number of target cards from our graveyard into our library. So this card not only mills us efficiently, but it can also prevent us from decking ourselves. And then there's Salty Ascendancy, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top two cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest back on top of your library in any order. So this is not only milling, but a form of card selection as well. And then Crawling Sensation is a fantastic addition to this deck. It says that at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 green insect creature token onto the battlefield. So this not only mills us, but it also gives us a benefit from our milling effects as well. So on top of zombies, we're going to be creating insects as well. But keep in mind that this is capped to one insect per turn. A card that can get really out of hand with this deck is Path of Discovery. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. So basically when you explore, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, it goes into your hand. Otherwise, you get a plus and plus one counter on that creature, and then you put that card back or into your graveyard. Because this doesn't specify non-token, our zombies and other tokens trigger this. So that means that we can create zombie after zombie if we keep getting creatures on top that we put into our graveyard. Another effective card in this deck is the Mending of Dominaria. It's a saga, and the first two lore counters are going to put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard, then we can return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. Its third lore counter says return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. With the number of lands that we're going to mill with this deck, this can put us way ahead of everyone else. And finally, we've got two more effective ways to mill ourselves with Embalmer's Tools and Altar of Dementia. Embalmer's Tools has activated abilities of creature cards in your graveyard, cost one less to activate, and tap and untap zombie you control, target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. That second part is fantastic for this deck because now our zombies can help us mill as well. And then Altar of Dementia says, sacrifice a creature, target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. So again, if we've got a disposable creature or one that's going to die anyways, we can use them to mill ourselves to create a zombie. Now on top of getting cards into our graveyard though, we need to get some cards into our hand as well. Let's go over some ways to do that in tactic number four, drawing down. First up, there's Undead Augur, which says, whenever Undead Augur or another zombie you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. One card for one life is a deal that will make any day in Commander. And then Azoni is fantastic for multiple reasons in this deck. When she comes into play, you create a 1-1 black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. So this can create us a ton of tokens at once, and we can also pay a black and a green to sacrifice another creature and gain one life and draw a card. Next up, we've got Forbidden Alchemy and Factor Fiction. Forbidden Alchemy says, look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, and it's got flashback for six and a black. And then Factor Fiction says, reveal the top five cards of your library, and opponent separates those cards into two piles, put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So again, both these can get us cards into our hand, and as long as we put a creature into our graveyard from these, we get a zombie token. And finally, one that won't get us any zombies, but can still be very effective with this deck is Treasure Cruise. It might cost eight mana in total, but it has delve and it says draw three cards. So in this deck, this is basically draw three cards for a blue. Now drawing is great, but sometimes we need a specific card. So now let's move on to tactic number five, to the yard. First up, there's Drod's Orders, which says, search your library for up to two creature cards and reveal them, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And then Final Parting does the exact same thing essentially, but they can be any two cards and aren't restricted to being creatures. Regardless, these are both fantastic cards in this deck. The card that we choose to put into our graveyard is probably always going to be a creature. And it's going to be a creature that we actually want in our graveyard anyway, like one of the ones with Dredge. So at the end of the day, we get something in our hand, a creature in our graveyard that we want there, and a zombie token. A similar but different kind of tutor comes with Corpse Connoisseur. It says when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card and put that card into your graveyard. If you do, shuffle your library. So again, we can get that right creature into our graveyard, get a zombie token, and we can actually do this again with this one since it's got an earth for three and a black. But on top of getting certain cards into our graveyard, there are also times when we want to get certain cards back. So now let's move on to tactic number six, Rot Back. First up, there's Genesis, which is actually another creature that we want in our graveyard. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, if Genesis is in your graveyard, you may pay two and a green if you do return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And then Tasker the Golden Fang can also help us get his cards back too. It has Delve, so we can cast it for cheap, and it has pay two Simic Simic, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a non-land card of an opponent's choice from your graveyard to your hand. 
So essentially we can use Tasker to mill and also to use it in a somewhat political way to get certain cards back. And finally there's Whisper Blood Liturgist which has tap, sacrifice two creatures, return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is a fantastic way for us to sacrifice some disposable creatures in exchange for a more valuable one. But what about actually keeping our creatures on the board? So now let's move on to tactic number 7, stay where you are. First up there's Rapid Vigor which is going to regenerate each creature you control. And then there's Golgari Charm which is a very flexible card, you can do the exact same thing or you can make all creatures get minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn or destroy target enchantment. But a somewhat repeatable way to save your non-token creatures comes with Cauldron of Souls. It has tap, choose any number of target creatures, each of those creatures gains persist until end of turn. So essentially when that creature dies, if it didn't have a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it, it comes back with a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. So this can essentially save us any creature once and it also gives us their ETBs. Now again, it's not going to save us our tokens, but again, getting those creatures back can help us create more. But outside of protecting our own things, how do we deal with our opponent's things? It's time for us to move on to tactic number 8, Away With You. First up there's Reclamation Sage, which when it comes into play we destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then Acidic Slime does the exact same thing, but we can also choose to instead destroy land. But perhaps the most effective way for this deck to destroy artifacts or enchantments comes with Null Mage Shepherd. It says tap 4 and tap creatures you control to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So with this in play we can utilize our zombie army to take out a ton of artifacts and enchantments. But how are we actually going to utilize that same army to win? Let's go over that in tactic number 9, Zombie Movie. First up we've got some zombie token lords with Vizier of the Scorpion, Gleaming Overseer, and Eternal Skylord. The first two have a mass 1 and Eternal Skylord has a mass 2. So essentially when they come into play, if we don't have a zombie army, they create a zombie army token and we put a plus plus 1 counter on it. And in Eternal Skylord's case, it's going to be two counters. On top of that though, Vizier of the Scorpion has zombie tokens you control have Death Touch. Gleaming Overseer has zombie tokens you control have Hexproof and Menace. And Eternal Skylord has zombie tokens you control have Flying. So each of these essentially make our zombie tokens even more deadly. Some other zombie lords come with Diagraph Captain, Lord of the Accursed, and Zombie Trailblazer. Diagraph Captain says other zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one, and whenever another zombie you control dies, target opponent loses one life. Lord of the Accursed says other zombies you control get plus one plus one, and by paying one in the black and tapping it, all zombies gain menace until end of turn. And then Zombie Trailblazer can be especially brutal. It says tap and untap zombie you control, target land becomes a swamp until end of turn, tap and untap zombie you control, target creature gains swamp walk until end of turn. So this can be used to help get creatures through with swamp walk, but it can also just be used to shut down an opponent's land base. With enough zombies in play, we can essentially just turn an opponent's lands into all swamps. And unless they're playing a a mono black deck they're probably going to be in big trouble. And finally there's Shepherd of Rot which can be a fantastic finisher it has, tap each player loses one life for each zombie on the battlefield. But outside of these zombies we've got some other ways to finish off our opponents too. So let's move on to our final tactic, tactic number 10, Zombie Friends. First up there's Sir Conrad the Grim which says whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And then by paying one in a black, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. This card is an absolute powerhouse in this deck and can take opponents out very quickly. Another fantastic card in this deck is Wonder, which says as long as Wonder is in your graveyard and you control an island, creatures you control have flying. So essentially this is a free and easy way to get our creatures flying. Next up we've got some ways to create a ton of tokens with Spider Spawning, Kessig Cage Breakers, and Warm Harvest. Spider Spawning says create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach for each creature card in your graveyard. And on top of that it's got flashback for a 6 and a black so we can also cast it from our graveyard too. Then Kessig Cage Breaker says whenever it attacks, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token that's tapped and attacking for each creature card in your graveyard. Just one attack from this can end the game in a lot of situations. And then Worm Harvest says create a 1-1 black and green worm creature token for each land card in your graveyard and it's got retrace. So this is a repeatable way to create a ton of worm tokens. Now each of these are fantastic ways to flood the board with tokens, but we've got an even more effective way. And that comes with the golden pick of our deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Second Harvest. It's an instant for 2 green green and it says for each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So at instant speed we essentially double up each and every single one of our tokens. That counts not only our zombies but also our insects, our wolves, etc, etc. And because this is at instant speed we can do it right before our turn to double up our army and take our opponents by surprise. For a deck that's built around creating tokens this is extremely effective at what it does. And that's why it's the golden pig. Again a huge thanks to Kyle for supporting this channel for over a year now. If you want to support this channel and run your own deck tech dedicated to you, consider becoming a patron. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up there's Command Tower which can tap for any of our colors and Exotic Orchard which can tap for any of our colors most of the time. Next up there's Evolving Wilds and Terramorph Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to get a base land into play tapped. And then there's Warp Landscape which can do the same if we pay 2 to do so. Next up we've got 3 lands that come into play tapped and tap for either a black or green mana. And then we've got 3 lands that come into play tapped and tap for either a green or blue mana. Next up we've got 2 lands that come into play tapped and tap for either a blue or black mana. And then there's Blighted Woodland which we can pay 3 and a green and tap and sacrifice to get 2 basics into play tapped. Next up we're running our 3 Vivid Lands with Vivid Grove, Vivid Marsh, and Vivid Creek. And then there's Opulent Palace which comes into play tapped and taps for any of our colors. Finally we're going to be running 18 basic lands, 9 of those will be a forest, 6 will be a swamp, and 3 will be an island.
And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average CDC Brood Tyrant EDH rack deck will set you back $331.87. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.64. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add in the Gitrog Monster by taking out Forbidden Alchemy. Next up, let's add in World Shaper by taking out the Mending of Dominaria. And then let's add in Stitcher Supplier by taking out Saltai Ascendancy. Next up, let's add in Muldrotha the Gravetide by taking out Factor Fiction. And then we're going to add in Doom Whisperer by taking out Night Vale Sprite. Finally, let's add in Death Baron by taking out Vizier the Scorpion. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tags. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.